how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. In the last couple of years, anime has been taking a rather large stride forward in terms of making a name for itself within other conventional mediums. We saw movies like Kimi no Nawa and Koino Katashi making a huge breakthrough in terms of anime films. And we've had on and off some pretty interesting series that have been airing on TV that have been making all sorts of different positive and negative conversations within the anime community. And one such anime film I'll be talking about today kind of made its breakthrough through one of its songs that has garnered over 80 million views on YouTube. And I don't care what anyone says, that's a lot of views. And with the song, they comprised a little music video to it which showed all sorts of different scenes from said film. The name of the film, which some of you may have heard of, is called Uchiage Hanabi, Shita Kara Miru Ka, Yoko Kara Miru Ka. Which is roughly translated to Fireworks, Should We See It From The Side Or The Bottom? A fantastic question to pose, by the way. And like most people who watched and listened to this music video, we had some massive hopes for the actual movie. I mean, geez, great music music, fantastic cinematography from Shaft Studios, as always, and overall just a nice looking movie that had similar vibes to that of Kimi no Nawa and The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. And I was so fucking pumped to watch this movie on the way to Singapore last week on the plane. I finally sat down, I saw it, I'm like, yes, I'm finally gonna watch this movie. And well, now's the time you check the title of this video. Look, it really is true when they say that you shouldn't let the hype beast grab a hold of you because concerning this movie, he was certainly grabbing my nuts really hard. Because man, if I were to say this just really bluntly, this movie fucking sucked. And I don't know, maybe it's because this film isn't suited for an international audience? One thing I found out when I was researching about this film is that it's originally based off a 50 minute live action J-drama movie of the same name back from 1993. And that the critical reception from Japanese audiences and Japanese critics for both the movie and the anime movie were generally positive. I mean, the anime adaptation itself made $14 million in the box office and a lot of critics said that it far exceeded the original film. But as soon as the film got English subs, like official English subs and was released internationally, that critical reception slowly dropped away. And the film itself, which was averaging like eight or nines out of tens in Japanese sites and forums, dropped all the way down to as low as a four or a five out of ten on sites like IMDB and my anime list. And in all honesty, I can't help but agree with this change of heart. Now, before we go on with this analysis, I know that I'll probably a lot of people haven't seen this movie yet because, again, it only came out last month, and in order for me to really properly analyze it as to why it is the biggest disappointment in anime of 2017, I kind of can't really avoid a lot of spoilers, so... I'm gonna give you guys a little spoiler warning right here in case you wanna go watch it. If you wanna go watch the film first, then pause this video, go watch the film, and then come back, okay? Okay, so if you're still watching this, then that means you've gone to watch the movie and come back, or you don't give enough shits about this movie to care about spoilers. Either way, I respect your decision. So with that being said, Let's examine. I think one thing that really let this film down in its entirety was the way that it presented itself on a conceptual basis. And by that, I mean how the film wants audiences to interpret itself as versus how it actually interprets itself as. I did a video recently covering this topic slightly with how Girls Last Tour, an anime from this current season, successfully manages to blend two seemingly opposite genres together by visually interpreting itself as one type of genre while conceptually conveying itself as another genre. Links to that video is in the description. Uchiage Hanabi tries to do this in sort of the same way, but instead with the romance and drama genres. Now, on first viewing of the film, most people assume that this film is going to be a love story about the two main characters right here. And well, you're not wrong because the two do end up together near the end, sort of? Okay, look, this is where things start to get really fucking confusing. And I don't know if they purposely made it so open-ended and art house like because that's what the original film was like. But just after watching this film, I just think that whole open-endedness and art house vibe of the romance in the show just seems very lackluster and, to be honest, very empty. I never thought I would say this to an anime film done by Shaft Studios, but 
this whole film just seems so empty. Like every character, every scene, every line of dialogue, everything from start to finish in this film just seems so soulless and has no substance to it. And that's especially disappointing and surprising for me considering Shaft Studios is one of my favorite anime studios of all time. I mean, the story in its entirety just doesn't make a lick of sense and nothing in this film is fully explained enough for us to understand it. We don't know who these characters are, what their motives are, what they actually feel, why they interact and say and do certain things. It's, it's, it's just fucking confusing, man. And here's the kicker. This isn't actually a romance film. Right? Like, you're like, what? Like, with visuals and sound design and atmospherics like this, it's not a fucking romance? Look, usually that alone would have piqued my interest into actually watching this film. Since conventionally, this kind of method would have been kind of a nice plot twist or a little nice genre twist that I feel a lot of romance-themed films tend to stay away from recently. But the problem with this film is the way that it deceives those expectations. While the film isn't exactly a romance, it displays a lot of elements that make you believe it's a romance film but not entirely. The film is classified as a drama, most likely because it is based off a G-drama film. Yet, the film does everything in its power to try and convince you that this is actually a romance film. But unfortunately, that fails because the romance aspect in this film is the equivalent to a fucking MacBook. It focuses on how it looks, rather than focusing on its actual functionality. And with that statement, I just started a Mac versus PC argument in the comments, didn't I? You're welcome. But in all honesty, there is nothing in this film that suggests any kind of relatability to the characters. Which I think is one aspect that is extremely important when you're trying to convey romance in a film. Why would you expect us, the audience, to care about the romantic development between two characters when we don't know enough about the characters, nor do we give two shits about the characters in the first place? That's one reason why I think writing romance novels and romance stories is probably the hardest type of fiction that you can ever write. Because you really have to convince your audience to care about the characters that you are showing, otherwise you have very little to back you up on. And it certainly doesn't fucking help that every character, not just the main characters, every character in this film is annoying and aggravating in every sense of the word. I mean, chill out, Joey, they're just kids. They're always unreliable and unexpected because that's just a part of growing up. Man, shut the fuck up. These characters have such varying and shifting personalities and characteristics, they might as well have a crippling case of fucking schizophrenia. One minute, the main character wants to really confess to the Senjo Gahara looking chick in this film, and the next minute, he wants to avoid her like the fucking plague. Why? Who the fuck knows? Puberty is a weird thing, ain't it? <sighs> I feel this film tried way too hard to show this aspect of puberty and growing up that it forgot to be a fucking story altogether. Like, yeah, we get that following a child that is growing up and is trying to learn about independence and love and changing personalities, friendships, life-changing decisions is important. And that, in general, that kind of subject matter does have a lot of inconsistencies and changes throughout the story. But you also have to understand that we need to feel compassion and empathy and relatability to these characters before you start showing these kinds of changes. Otherwise, how do you expect us to keep up and how do you expect us to care throughout the entire film? And the film fails to grab our attention about these characters because it's screwing around doing bullshit in the first half of the film that we don't care about. It's honestly a shame that they chose Shaft Studios to direct this film because in terms of the directing, the filmography, the cinematography, this film looks fucking awesome. Awesome. It has just that right amount of Shimboism with all of its abstract visuals and atmospheric tones that makes the visuals just so interesting to look at. And with the theme and overall plot of this film being very atmospheric and mysterious, I think Shaft was a perfect choice for this, although some may disagree with it, but it doesn't really matter because the film is boring as shit! But it's interesting because while I was researching this film, I found a lot of voices and opinions that said that maybe it wasn't a good idea for Shaft to animate this film. Lots of fans of the original live action film praised the original creator, Iwai Shunji's directing and cinematography, 
and the way that he made the film very art house like. But with this anime adaptation, a lot of people have criticized Shimbo for putting too much of his personality into it, which made the film completely different. But since I have yet to watch the original live action film, I can't say for certain right now whether the reason why this anime adaptation, at least, is boring as batshit in my opinion is because of Shimbo's directing, or maybe it's just because Iwai Shunji's writing wasn't that particularly great from the original live action. Who knows? And look, it's not like I don't like these kinds of romance drama films either. And it's not like the international audience doesn't like these kinds of romance drama films. Like, the whole reason why films like The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, every Shinkai Makoto film, Koi no Katachi, all of those films became so huge even today is because it is a really good romance drama film. But Uchiyage Hanabi just does not know what it wants to do with itself. And that's the whole reason why I'm calling it the biggest disappointment in anime of 2017, because I think this film had a ton of potential and could have been part of the greats of Shinkai Makoto, Girl Who Leapt Through Time, Koi no Katachi. I think that one little change that they could have done to make this film a little bit better was to just explain the motives of the characters more concisely. Because I don't know if it's because the adaptation is based off a very art housey Iwai Shunji film, coupled with a very art housey Shimbo directing, but there was just too much abstract shit in this film to even care about. I feel this film was just Iwai and Shimbo just throwing art house into the mix to make it seem more pretentious and intellectual than it should have been. And you can't make the excuse of, Joey, there probably wasn't enough time to explain the motives because it's such a short film. Because the adaptation is 90 minutes long, an extra 40 minutes of content compared to the original 50 minute live action J drama. Even though they essentially doubled the length of the movie, they still failed to add any kind of substance to the film. Since it spent so much of that time with just Shimbo showing what he can do with scenery shots that it failed to be any kind of a logical story. And speaking of logical, the one thing that I can forgive this film about is the whole going back in time or going back to another universe aspect that they throw into the mix. We've seen concepts like this in past romance films like in Kimi no Nawa and The Girl Who Leapt Through Time and I don't honestly have a problem with that. The audience doesn't need to know the logistics of this whole time traveling concept because it's honestly not that important to understand. Like we didn't get a full explanation of how the Kuchikamizake works and there was really, no matter how you think about it, there is no logical explanation as to how that can lead to time travel, but we still enjoyed your name because it was just a good romance drama film. Because it gave us time to grow attached to the main love interest and to grow attached to the way that their relationship developed throughout the movie. But since Uchiyage Hanami fails to get us attached to the characters and their relationships, this bizarre concept of time travel just sticks out like a sore thumb. And an already bizarre plot concept like throwing a glass ball into the air and the light hitting the guy's eyes and then he travels back in time, that whole concept just seems even more bizarre and lackluster than it should be. Not to mention, what the fuck is up with that ending, dude? I personally quite enjoy these kinds of confusing open-ended endings, if they're done right. But the ending to this film was just lazy and stupid. Oh shit, the crystal ball of endless possibility exploded in the fireworks which showed all sorts of different timelines that we could have had and now that we know we want to see each other again, we're just gone from this universe now. Like, what? By the way, I'm just spitballing here, like I'm just guessing that's what the meaning of the ending of this film means because in all honesty, I don't give enough shits about this film to properly care and examine the ending to this film. Uchiyake Hanabi, for me, fits into the same realm as films like Batman vs Superman, where it's like, I've seen it once and I think that's enough. And I honestly don't know how I can change this film to make it better, other than just giving us proper explanations and giving us more concise explanations for the characters and their motives. I mean, at this point, a fucking two minute exposition at the beginning of the film as to what these characters are about will still make this film better than if not. Even though in any other fictional story, that would be the worst way to go in terms of story writing, when it comes to this film, anything will make it fucking better. One thing I thought that was very interesting about this film as I was doing research for it was when I asked an older generation, like the older generation who watches anime about this film and the people who did watch this film, a lot of them actually said they really liked this film because it 
felt nostalgic. Nostalgia towards what varied from person to person, obviously, but just from that, I can probably safely say that if this anime adaptation came out at the same time that the original film did, like 20, over 20 years ago, back in 1993, this film would have done phenomenal. Unfortunately, I just think another reason why this film just failed was because of the timing that it came out. We just finished welcoming what is now considered the anime film mega giants like Kimi no Nawa and Koi no Kadachi, which is a massive hurdle that films of the same genre and caliber need to jump over. And unfortunately, I think Uchiagi Hanabi just failed to jump that height. Not to mention that since the original film was written in the early 90s, there are a lot of aspects in this film that just in today's standards just seem very cliche and practically stupid. Especially for people like me and a lot of others in the modern anime community that have seen a whole bunch of romance anime and drama anime and have seen all the possibilities that that genre can bring in the anime world. Very vanilla and very simple romance drama films like Uchiage Hanabi just unfortunately seems very boring nowadays. And I can safely say that as I was watching this film personally, I felt every now and then a sense of deja vu, like I've seen this film before somewhere. And I think it's because even though this anime adaptation came out a few months ago, technically speaking, it actually came out over 20 years ago. So yeah, Dalco fans, I know you really enjoyed the song, as I did, but my bottom line for this video slash review slash analysis slash shit talk is that just stick to the music video. All I'm gonna say is that if the four and a half minute music video can give you just as much information about the film as the entire 90 minute film itself, then yeah, it's probably not worth your time. But guys, if you did watch this film, what did you think about it? Did you enjoy it or was it also a big disappointment for you as well? And one thing I wanna know from you guys is what do you think is aspects or an aspect that is very important when trying to write a good romance story. Is it relatability? Is it story? Is it plot motives? Or is it something else? I want you guys let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments below. And hey, if there are any other series or films that you want me to do more deep analysis stuff on like this, then the best place to do it is to suggest it either in the comments below or suggest it to me over on Twitter. Some of the more recent analysis stuff that I've done that I've really enjoyed talking about have come from suggestions from Twitter. So that's the best place to do it. You can fucking shit post me there and all that kind of stuff and enjoy my shit post there. We have a fun time over there, so follow me on Twitter if you haven't yet. Also, if you like this video and you enjoy what I do, then the best place to support me is over on my Patreon. We have a ton of cool stuff coming up on Patreon this month and next year as well, and uh, the support I've been getting over there has been fucking astounding. So, if you like to support this channel and the stuff that I do, then check that first link in the description below to support your boy. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. As always, like your favorite if you enjoy, subscribe for more anime banner, and I'll see you guys next video of whatever I may. Keep watching anime. Done it!